It's been one of the most controversial issues dividing rural America in years. Carbon capture pipelines. Tonight I begin a multi-part series of reports looking at everything from the companies that want to build them to those for and those against and the possible use of eminent domain to make it happen. Katie begins with a closer look at just what carbon capture pipelines are. This is Lincoln Way Energy, an ethanol plant in Nevada, Iowa. The largest byproduct of this and other ethanol plants is carbon dioxide. Upwards of 5 billion tons are emitted in the U.S. every year. Now two companies want to sequester that gas, liquefy it, and store it underground. That process, known as carbon sequestration, has become a hot-button topic across the Corn Belt. You know, I think it's really great to partner up with Summit Carbon Solutions because it's going to secure the future of ethanol plants. Summit Carbon Solutions is one of the corporations with plans to build a $3.7 billion liquid carbon capture pipeline through the Midwest. It's compressing that carbon, putting it into a transportation infrastructure system or a pipeline, and then moving it to a sequestration site, which ultimately will then store that, uh, that carbon molecule under Caprock in North Dakota. Lee Blank is the CEO. Really what it, you know, I liken it to maybe the Transcontinental Railroad. It opens markets for uh, plants like this one uh, here in Nevada uh, to give it other places that they can ship their products at a premium. Summit will connect more than 30 ethanol plants across 2,000 miles, capturing more than 12 million tons of CO2 each year. The pressurized liquid carbon dioxide will be stored deep underground near Bismarck, North Dakota. We would hope to be fully operational first quarter of 2025. All of that infrastructure really looking to, to do um, carbon management at its core. A second pipeline, Heartland Greenways, Navigator CO2 Ventures will also capture and liquefy CO2 from ethanol producers to be stored in south central Illinois. We've taken that skill set, uh, curated it into the, the CO2 space and, and brought forward the project, um, the Heartland Greenway that's, that's being talked about largely today. Navigator's pipeline will cross more than 1,300 miles through five states, capturing and storing approximately 15 million metric tons of CO2 a year. We intend to be operational um, at some point in 2025. A third carbon capture pipeline, Wolf Carbon Solutions, is a smaller 280-mile pipeline crossing Cedar Rapids and Davenport in eastern Iowa on its way to storage sites in Illinois. These three pipelines have been met with heavy resistance from some landowners along their path. So it was just out of the blue. We got a registered mail and uh, it just notified us that what they were thinking about doing and the meeting. Landowners are being asked to sign easements allowing the pipelines to pass through their property. Some are not on board. Well, every meeting that we have attended on the informational meeting, the information's different. And we know that they're, they have told us different things. And I don't know if they're all false, but they seem to be leaning towards benefit rather than safety. And that's what our main concerns are, is safety. Many legislators are on board with carbon sequestration. And it's value-added agriculture and it's creating value for the farmers. Uh, we raise an incredibly low carbon footprint corn, uh, but also the sequestration because the lower to be able to sell our ethanol to the markets where we're able to capture more value. But questions arise with using eminent domain to make these projects happen. Uh, the use of eminent domain is a last resort scenario, you know, especially on a project like this. Uh, but ultimately, you know, it's an infrastructure project. All things considered, you know, it's my hope that uh, the right away can be achieved and, and accomplished uh, without the use of eminent domain. Is that agreeable? Both I've, Summit and Navigator are taking the fight over property rights to court. In Woodbury County, a Moville, Iowa woman is fighting to keep Navigator land surveyors off of her property. I just feel it's uh, against my property rights as an owner. Summit, Navigator, and Wolf are pushing forward with a goal of changing the CO2 landscape in the Midwest. And I believe it's a big part of the future um, of the family farms and the next generation. Tomorrow night here on Siouxland News, I'll take a closer look at what's called an easement, a deal that allows pipeline companies to use a person's land. And follow along every Tuesday and Wednesday night on Siouxland News for Along the Route, a pipeline discussion.